Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready for another deep dive? We've got a good one lined up for you today, all about some of the big choices that go into building a small sat. Yeah, it should be fun. You know, it's interesting. You send over these excerpts from Orbital blog content. Yeah. And they really get into the nitty gritty, which I know you love. Absolutely. They're really relevant because when you're talking about something as complex as a satellite, even a small one, the decisions you make can make or break the entire mission. No pressure then. Right. 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 Okay, so the first excerpt dives right into the heart of things with the command and data handling system. The CNDH. Yeah, CNDH, right, which to someone like me sounds a little intimidating, to be honest. Well, it's interesting, right, because it's like the brains of the whole operation. You can think of it like the control tower at an airport, making sure everything runs smoothly. Oh, okay. That makes it much easier to visualize. So it's not just about sending commands up to the satellite. No, it's about way more than that. It's about monitoring the satellite's health, managing all the data it collects, and making sure everything keeps running smoothly even when things get tough out there in space. Which, let's be honest, they often do. Yeah, space is not exactly a forgiving environment. Exactly. Which is why, you know, the blog post mentions five key factors to consider when choosing a CNDH system, and those really stand out. Yeah, and two in particular, you know, I'm no engineer, but even I can appreciate how crucial reliability and redundancy are, especially when you're talking about something as complex and risky as launching something into space. Yeah, I mean, imagine spending years, right, years on a project only to have it fail because one single component malfunctions. Like the ultimate nightmare. So that's where redundancy comes in, right? It's all about having backups upon backups. Think of it like this. You wouldn't want your car to break down because one spark plug failed, would you? Right, right. Redundancy is like having spare spark plugs, maybe even a spare engine, just in case. It's about making sure the mission can continue even in the face of unexpected challenges. And trust me, space is full of them. Which actually makes me think of the other factor they mentioned, environmental considerations. Mm -hmm. That takes on a whole new level of seriousness when you put it that way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about extreme temperatures, intense radiation, and the vacuum of space itself. Right. It's not exactly a walk in the park out there. Your CNDH system has to be built tough to survive, let alone thrive in those conditions. So it's like designing for the most extreme environments on Earth, but times 100? Yeah, something like that. It's incredible, the things they have to consider when designing for space. So speaking of designing for space, the second excerpt you shared focuses on something called the small sat catalog, which sounds kind of like a game changer. I don't know why. Maybe just the name of it. Well, it kind of is, because remember how we were just talking about the importance of reliability and redundancy? Mm -hmm. Finding the right parts, the ones that can actually hack it in space? Well, that's not as easy as it sounds. That can be one of the biggest headaches when you're developing a small set. Yeah. It's not like you can just swing by your local Radio Shack and pick up some space grade components. Exactly right. Yeah. This is where the small sat catalog comes in. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's like a curated list of vendors and parts that have already been vetted, you know, put through the ringer and actually meet the, well, the insane demands of space. So it's like having a team of experts pre-screening everything, making sure you don't end up with a dud when you're, what, 200 miles above Earth and things start going haywire. Exactly, exactly. And the range of stuff they've got in there is, what's well, pretty impressive, honestly. They've got everything from what they call the satellite bus, which is basically the chassis, like the frame of your car, okay. to yeah. propulsion systems, power systems, even down to, like, the nuts and bolts. Speaking of which, I actually noticed they even listed ground systems in there, which I thought was interesting. It's easy to get caught up in the whole, you know, launching things into space part of it and kind of forget about everything that has to happen down here on the ground. Oh, for sure. Ground systems are essential, really. I mean, a small sat is only as good as its connection back to Earth, right? So when we say ground systems, we're talking about all the equipment, the antennas, receivers, transmitters, all that stuff that lets you talk to your satellite, get data back from it. So it's like the unsung hero of the small sat world. Exactly. If you don't have reliable ground systems, it's like sending a text message and never getting a reply. It really makes you appreciate all the behind the scenes stuff that most people don't even think about. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to, you know, space exploration, satellites and all that. It's not just about the rocket launch. For yeah, me. exactly. But even beyond the tech itself, thinking back to the small sat catalog, it seems like that represents a bigger shift. You know, 
Oh, absolutely. In how we approach space exploration overall. I think so, yeah, because you're making it easier for more players to get involved. Right. Because it used to be, if you wanted to do anything in space... You had to be like a giant corporation. You had to be a government or a huge company with tons of resources, and now the SmallSat mm. catalog, it's like... It levels the playing field, you know what I mean? Like democratizing space. Exactly. And that's when things get really interesting because now you have universities, startups, even individual researchers, they can all start thinking about, hey, maybe we can launch our own small set. Which is incredible when you think about the possibilities, right? I mean, what could that lead to? Exactly. And that's what I think is so exciting. We always think about, oh, you know, exploring distant planets or whatever. But what about the problems we're facing here on Earth? Right. Climate change, monitoring the environment, tracking endangered species. Small sats could be a game changer for all of that. It's like we're on the verge of a whole new era of discovery. And it's not just about, you know, scientific discovery, but about using space technology to make life better here on earth exactly so to kind of bring it all back for our listener today we started with the core of a small sat the brain the cndh system right that's its brain its control center and how important it is for that to be reliable then we shifted gears to the small sat catalog which is like this incredible resource that's making it way easier to actually build these things. And I think what we realized along the way is that, you know, this isn't just about the technology itself. It's about what that technology enables, right? It's about opening up a whole new frontier. More people in the game mean more ideas, more innovation, and hopefully some really groundbreaking discoveries that could benefit all of us. Well said. And on that note, that's a wrap for this deep dive. Huge thanks to you, as always, for breaking it all down. Anytime. And to everyone listening, until next time, keep exploring.